From my home, the Maybe Development Agency, with Skillshare International and the UK Big Lottery Fund, work together to develop sustainable livelihoods in some of the poorest communities in the poorest regions of Namibia. This video shows how a community-based approach that offered choice and variety assisted families in Bravo, Kavango to consider and then adopt a smallholder approach that contained a much wider range of crops and fruits to supplement the basic crops of millet and maize that is typically grown in the family plots of rural communities in Namibia. Many of the additional crops and fruits are described, along with techniques that make the most of low rainfall that is the norm in Namibia. For communities such as Asan, who already include small animals in their diet, rabbit farming can add protein to the daily diet. Some of the plants described also have medicinal value. And, as John Moremi, our guide in this video, explains, health has improved and death rates have fallen. Additionally, Comiho set out to strengthen local knowledge of naturally occurring plants such as Devil's Claw and Hudio Gotini that have medicinal values that are widely recognized in America and Europe. The aim was to improve harvesting techniques so that the plants are not over harvested and to assist communities win access to better markets. Bethel Katapua from the Ben Hur Rural Development Center in Armaheke closes the video by describing this work. Okay, uh, this is a, a cassava family plant. It's called Mudika. It's mainly for leaf. It can be used as a, a by product to the food. To the, it can be eaten with the porridge. Or it can be eaten with meat or it can be just eaten as on its own so it is not this one is not the type you use the the, the tuba you only use the leaf but there is also a subspecies which you which you use the the tuba which is also very good uh, quality and which many people use to make uh, flour out of it okay uh, this is the sweet potato uh, uh, field uh, mainly it is it's, it's, it's a bank we have decided that uh, we have to supply uh, also this uh, specific plant to the farmers we had only one uh, vines so we reproduce it and then we give it to the farmers most of the farmers have this this uh, um, uh, this crop now also that they are really can be able to use it for during also dry season since it's also very adapted to this soil condition climatic conditions we planted in this uh, on the ridges or making the ridges this is also a, another way of mitigating strategy to uh, harvest the water so that the plant can be given uh, enough uh, this limited resources for it to grow and complete its life cycle and then at the same time same time ensuring food security Okay, as part of our strategy to diversify the food uh, uh, security, we also got some seeds from the north of these wild uh, uh, tomatoes, small tomatoes. The good thing is it's very much adapted to the climatic condition here. It's very uh, disease resistant and it is can produce throughout the year with the uh, rainfall uh, fed. So it has uh, really also offered a, good, a great deal for this community at the Bravo Resolution Farm. And they are really using it. They don't buy uh, soup from the towns which are mainly also full of uh, preservatives and additives. So this is really a benefit which they are getting from these small tomatoes. Tete field, uh, with, uh, why we planted potatoes is actually for the tourism. Number one is to a source of uh, vegetable or nutri nutri nutritional values for the household levels it can be just cooked and eaten in, in, in that form or it can be eaten with anything mixed with meat lucky star anything which you need of your fa of your favor and then the other uh, reason is actually to for making the jam 
you know, uh, last year we were famous of making a, a gem out of mtete that you can be able to put on the bread and then um, also yeah, eaten with the bread. And this is also as a source of income generating project for these uh, rural women in the, uh, in the rural, in the formal settlement. The formal, in the formal settlement. So uh, this uh, mutete has been successful now grown in Bravo. All the households, all the 110 households, <coughs> has managed to plant this uh, this crop. And uh, yeah, and since it's also very well adapted to these climatic conditions, soil types, it is one of the. Okay, uh, this is uh, only uh, one example of the household uh, farmer who has adopted our uh, range of uh, strategy on uh, diversifying using the indigenous fruit trees and uh, so that you can be able to supply the, the household or uh, the family with their uh, nutritional requirements. So we have supplied the, uh, the mangoes, we also supplied the uh, embe, onyandi and then also mudika uh, to each household. And this has really adapted well and soon seems to be doing very great. Okay, uh, Mr. This is Mr. Pitt with Mr. Gabri Hangara. They are enjoying the Moringa plant. Moringa plant is known to have the ability to cure over 300 type of illnesses and diseases. It uh, has a lot of nutritional uh, benefits. And it's yeah, it is it's an incredible plant. You can use both the all the plants, all the plant parts on that tree, the leaves and uh, the bulbs, the roots and everything. So normally you can uh, cook it with the food, or you can make it a tea. You boil the leaves, then you drink it without adding uh, sugar, and then also you can be able to dry it in the shade, and then the dried the powder you can. Uh, Either drink to put in water, mix, then you drink, or you put in a, a warm water, then you can drink. It does a wonder. So, in the, the moment, the, it has uh, shot a significant decrease of uh, uh, diseases and uh, death rate in, in Broward Settlement Farm. So, this is, is really, as you see, that plant, it is not growing. It is being cut and harvested on a, almost a daily basis. With her uh, uh, natural uh, pumpkins. She have planted these pumpkins. Usually, you can just cook them. Then you uh, make a mix with a flour, either mahangu or maize flour. Then you make a very nice soft porridge for the household. She's uh, uh, we it, uh, we introduce this and, and try to diversify this type of crops, as we earlier stated for really to diversify the food okay, security. This is the uh, rabbit project uh, with the aim of to supply a, a cheap source of. Uh, nutrition of, of meat to the uh, farmers in the resettlement farm. You know, uh, at the moment the problems was triggered that the, most of the uh, wild rabbits has uh, got extinct and been handed down completely by the people. So we thought is the uh, another way to introduce them is to really to to, to rear them since they reproduce very fast and that they can be. Uh, use as a meat source and also the same time to create awareness to the farmers that they uh, can look after them, that they don't get extinct, that they are able to sustainably use it for many years and generations to come. So that's why we have the rabbits. The moment we have a rolling program, after when the farmer is able to produce the, the, the rabbits, then they give to the next uh, farmers. So that they can be able to also My name is Bethel Kadapwa. I'm a natural resources technician at Komeho. Here I'm with the two people from, there are two harvesters, Devil's Claw harvesters. Well, they are one of the people that were trained in Devil's Claw harvesting. So they started, um, last year they harvested about 517 kilograms of Devil's Claw. So now I think they, they sold for about 9,000 something. So we know that uh, Devil's Law have been people have been harvesting for so long, 
But then Komeho just came in to train people in sustainable harvesting of devil's claw because we know that if these people cannot harvest uh, sustainable, the devil's claw will be extincted. So we are trying to avoid that. And now people, I think also one of the part was to improve the living standard of the people and also looking for better markets for the people that are harvesting the devil's claw.